Oi. Thank you so much. What an inspiring place to be. Um, when I was a boy, I dreamt about te teleportation. And um, I walked around the, the streets in Stockholm, away from home. Um, and I looked at the, the, the houses and the, and the, the buses and, the, and the everything around me. And I thought, what would happen to all of this if we had a teleportation device? Uh, similar to, to the one in Star Trek, you know, beam me up, Scotty. Um, and I thought about what would happen in, to society if such a device would, would exist. And I thought about all the store, stores and all the cars and everything around me and, and thought about that all of those things are kind of connected to the, to the notion of inertia. And inertia is the, the resistance to movement. So there's a lot of things in our society that are um, connected to this concept. And uh, <coughs> real estate prices and salaries and all of those things are, are kind of connected to, to the, that we can't move very quickly. And, uh, and I, would, I would think about what would happen if, if something happened uh, to, to movement, if we were more, more easily move ourselves. And uh, would we still live where we were? Would we still l try to live as close together as, po uh, as we were? Or would we rather uh, move to a mountaintop like this? And instead of going very, very quickly to our, our work with cars, maybe we'd just beam ourselves to, to work. And that would mean that we could live somewhere at a, at a, a mountaintop and still work in Manhattan or Friden's Plan. And, but since then, in the beginning of 90s, we have been moving in the opposite direction. We have, we have, all of us are moving to the cities and away from the mountaintops. And uh, we bought more cars and built more roads and we built bigger stores and we closed the small ones. And our students, we moved from the countryside into the cities. And the reason for this, I think, is technology or maybe lack thereof. We didn't get our there are jetpacks and flying cars and helicopters and the things that we were dreaming about in the 70s. And, and I, would, I would think that that's a little bit sad. But now, the last maybe five years, I think we, something remarkable has happened. Because we have, now we have AI and we have smartphones. And we have cheaper batteries and renewable energy. So I think now it's time to start dreaming again, because maybe we will have something similar to to teleportation device. But it's not going to look the way that we imagine it in the 70s. It's going to look different. It's going to be a lot different than we, we imagined. And someone said that future is already here, but it's unevenly distributed. I think that's really, really interesting. Because if you think about all the, the different small things that are happening right now, and and think about those things, what's going to happen in the next decade or two. With self-driving cars, for example, Volvo is right now developing a car where you can go uh, on the evening from home, and then you sleep in the car during the night, and in the morning you wake up fresh at, your, at the entrance of your destination. I think that's a really interesting idea, and it's a lot similar to a teleportation device, isn't it? And Google just launched their taxi fleet in the United States. And self-driving taxis is a very also interesting idea. That it's also similar to, to a teleportation device. And, and all of those things are kind of different from a teleportation device, but they are also connected to this notion of inertia, the resistance to movement. Those devices and this technology is, is transforming the way that we can we can trans or transport ourselves. Swedish companies called Einride, they are, they are transforming the, the transport business with their electric self-driving truck that are right now testing their, their or running in production in Sweden right now. And here in Storuman, 
they are doing, they're creating a drone that can lift eight, eight kilograms of, of uh, payload with medicine uh, and run for 45 minutes. And that is also a teleportation device, isn't it? And I would argue that if all of those things are going to happen now, and if we make sure we use them wisely, we might be right now living in peak urban. We're never going to have so much cars or roads or resistance to movement as we have right now. I would think that's going to change society in some ways, and I'm really interested to be a part of that. And I, I think that also going to affect rural areas and countryside. And I think it's going to be a renaissance for, for the rural, rural areas in the world. And if we imagine what would be to, be, to, to have all these devices right now, we would, could be sitting here and be hungry with our friends and order sushi. And it would be delivered from one of those drones just delivering to, to the doorstep at our house. And that is, that is something that's going to happen in, within the next decade. And we need to use those ideas into the vision of the future. Because that's going to that's gonna happen. And also, a designated self-driving bus that could take us when we are at pub nights and we don't have to drive home. And those small things are really important. And if we're going to get the youth to, st uh, to stay here and not move to the cities, and also get a lot of people that are tired of being alone and isolated in, in, in the cities to move out here, I think those things, like sushi deliveries and small things like that, are really important. But if we try to predict the future, you also be, have to be very cautious, because it's very easy to just take technology and just look at it and to say, this is cool, we, we'll use this. But I think if you're going to predict the future, you can use two ways. Either you just take the technology and just try to figure, f figure something out. Or you start with a problem and then find the technology that solves the problem. And we have a lot of problems in the countryside and rural areas. And let's just try to find the technology to, to solve them. And that's exactly what we're doing in predictive movement. We try to find problems, real-world problems, very easy ones, and find real technical solutions to that that exist today. And we want to, to do this here. And we want to find and start a movement, a lot of people to involved in this and build it together. So we want to start small. We want to identify the needs today. And we want to start solving them. And we want to do that together, um, not only here with, in Norrbotten, uh, but also with the rest of the world. So we are planning to do this with open source and uh, together with as many people as possible and create this future together. Because I think the third option when you're predicting the future, which is the best one, is that future can be predicted best when you create it yourself. So. I want to get all of you to join me in this movement, and, uh, which is called the predictive movement. Thank you. <laughs>